Hello everyone, here at Marion's World, I woke up, and it's just after dawn, and it's the longest day. And all of a sudden I thought, why don't I just film what I'm doing? So I'm going to try and do that and see if I can edit together a little sneak peek of what my day is going to be today. And so it looks like today is going to be a beautiful day. Happy midsummer. I'm just sitting out in front of the greenhouse, having my breakfast, a bit of yogurt and stewed rhubarb. Oh, of course the cup of tea. You can't miss out the cup of tea. Um, but what I'm intending to do is go through there and try and do some gardening because it's very overgrown. Okay, we're going through the rose arch. And it's got a beautiful rose just coming out now. This one's called Weichenblau. And it's a rambler, sort of a mauve rambler. And next to it is a honeysuckle called Sweet Sue. And it's got the most glorious scent. It's sort of taken over my arch because last year I didn't do any gardening in my garden at all. Um, and so nothing got pruned. But I quite like the way this is now like a secret place to go under. So we're going to dip down and go under here and through the arch to find the plants have virtually taken over. Which is fine by me because I like things to look quite natural. So there's a path up there and those roses are looking amazing. The bit I want to work on today is actually over here. So there's actually a path, if you can see the step there, there's actually a path going up there to a little bench I have under the apple tree. And the apple tree is actually only there as a vehicle for the magnificent honeysuckle. And the scent on an evening just wafts down towards the house. So my garden isn't actually that big, but it's full of plants. And last year they had full rain to take over. So I'm going to get changed and work on this piece of path. Hopefully by later on today, I'll have a path back. Okay, I've finished. I had to stop filming, my neighbours were making quite a noise with a strummer. So I finished the path, I did four buckets of, of weeds and cut back. So I'm going to start from the same place as this morning. So we're going to duck under the rose. I've swept this bit of path. And then where you can see the difference is, oh, we've got a path. So I can walk up here. Things are nicely cut. We've still got the honeysuckle, which I haven't cut back, because who could cut that back? It's too nice. So I'm going to duck under it again. And now we can see right up to the shady bench, because it's under the apple tree. Come right up to here. There's actually a little stream here that I put in quite a long time ago, and a pond in all that undergrowth. And the path should go onwards through here. So there's a stepping stone either side. And I should be able to step across into that. So that'll be my next job. Try to get through there and get to the other side of the garden. I'm really pleased with what I did. I can see things. I can get down the path. There's a lot, a lot of overgrown things in here that need sorting out. But it doesn't matter for the moment. Things will grow. Clematis is looking pretty. You can see down to get through. Anyway, I'm off to do something else. I'm going to get changed. I'm going to do some flower pounding now. Oh, or maybe some scone making. Who knows? I thought I'd do some flower pounding this afternoon. What I've collected, uh, I've never tried honeysuckle before. So honeysuckle and um, alchemila ladies mantle we've got geranium leaves um, geraniums of a couple of different kinds as far as I know these will all make purple even that one will go this color that's what I think will happen um, I've got a, a single rose which I may have to take the petals off to arrange them but we'll, we'll see how it goes and then some various leaves and this lovely piece here uh, sweet Sicily, which should work really well. Clematis leaf. 
uh, leaves off my um, oh my goodness red currant okay I've gone and got some ferns as well to put them in the mix and the fabric has been mordanted so I've treated it with alum which should make the colours colour fast um, but normally I only ever do it on cotton so I've got two other things to do it with so this piece first is cotton uh, this is cotton I'm not quite sure what this has been because it's got a really pretty bit of drawn thread work at the top but it's hemmed all the way around so I will use that what I'm thinking of is that whatever the prints I make today um, I'll be making little pretty bags out of them possibly for Christmas presents or something like that and the things I haven't used before, which are having a bit of a, a bit of an experiment, is I've got a little scrap of the cream silk that I used in the stitch book. Um, although I've mordant in this, alum's not really a mordant for animal protein, so it might not have made any difference to that. But I've never actually done the flower pounding on silk, so I thought that little scrap was enough to practice with. I've actually got a bit of polyester silk, which... Um, I just thought, well, why not? We'll just see whether it makes a good print or not. I'll move my botanicals there. And the setup I've got, I've got this is a wooden little table I used to put my breakfast on, and I've got just two bits of old, well, actually, they're old drawers, I think, uh, but to make a good, a good solid base for hammering on, and I've got a good heavy hammer. So we're going to start by arranging the bit of material okay I've moved into a sunnier spot so I'm arranging my flowers I'm gonna I know the sweet Sicily is going to print really well so I'll put that down here and I know the geraniums will so again I'm just pinching the back off to make it lie as flat as possible that's a different geranium actually put that one there um, we'll try the alcamela. I'm not sure whether that's going to work or not, but we can definitely have a try. I'm just going to take those leaves off because I think they'll ruin the print. We'll just see if the flower stems will go. And let's try, let's try the red currant leaf. Just going to take the top of that off. And use that. I'm not sure whether this will print or not, but we can but try. Okay, put it there. There, it's quite a nice arrangement. I put that one on, that's just going to prove that that one will go blue, the same as these. Fold carefully, put your cotton over the top. flatten it down and then the fun part but obviously the noisy part too so we're just going to hold it down and start and look like magic the colour comes into the fabric so you can see I've got a geranium coming through there It is quite noisy. Uh, this is the pansy. It's going a good blue. Oh, you can actually see it's a pansy. Sometimes what happens is things are very juicy, but then they don't make a print. They just dissolve into nothingness and all you get is a blob of colour, which is not always what you want. So this is that lovely... This, I can't remember what it's called. I do know, but I just can't remember. Actually, it's not looking too bad to me, that. Let's go down here. We've got the red currant leaf. And remember, the actual print is the inside. We're only seeing what's just managing to come through the cotton. And what else have I got up here? Something up here. Oh, something going on. Oh, that's the alchemilla. That's 
that's going quite well. The ladies' mantle. Look at that, that looks good. Here's the other geranium. I think this is the very pink one, which I said would go purple. I think it is anyway. Let's have a little look. Yes, it is. That's the pink geranium. But they all seem to have purple colour when you hammer them. Can't remember what I had on the bottom. I'll just keep going. Makes your arm ache, I know that. Bring you back into frame. A piece of sweet Sicily works really well. Hmm, okay. And you see how the pansies started to change colour? That's as the oxygen gets to the chemicals inside the sap. I think I'm going to open this up and have a look. So we open this back just carefully. Oh, okay. We take our stuff off. Get all the the bits of squashed plant. And get it off from here as well. So the leaves can come off. That's actually, I quite like that one. It's gone brown, but it's quite a nice print. Pansy, it's totally gone blue. Look at that. That's an amazing colour. Wow. Sweet Sicily's beautiful, lovely bright green. And all of the geraniums ended up purple. So what happens is, oh, and there's the... The red current actually didn't really do it very well, so that's a that's a dud that one. So I, th I think that's quite nice. The surprise for me has been the pansy, which has come out really pretty. That's the reverse, obviously. So you can see we got the best print on the top of the flowers. And the reverse of the flowers has made a print, but not quite as good. But it's still nice. You could stitch over that. Cut it up and use it in your stitch books. Make little lavender sachets. Anything. So that's just that's just going to go in the garden. Okay, so we're on a roll now. So I think next one, we'll see if we can use the rows. So I'm going to just I'm going to use the other side of the cloth. Actually, I think I'll put it there. I'm going, to, I'm going to take the the petals off it, I think, because I think that central boss will just be too thick, be too thick to hammer. So I think the best thing is to just pick the flat, the petals. Now I've never done this rose before. This is a rose called For Your Eyes Only. Uh, I don't put the sweet Sicily again because I know that really works well. Just make a little arrangement. And we'll use, let's try a different leaf. We'll try, we'll try the fern. Try a bit of the fern. Let's try some of the fern. Like that. That looks pretty. There we go. I hope they come out now. Because I'm liking the pattern. And let's try just to put some of this. Maybe I'll just put the whole rose in the middle. I'll take the thick bit off the back of it. I could have just put all the petals on. And we'll just try that and just see whether we get a good pattern. So, ferns, two roses, sweet Sicily. Might not work here because I've overlapped them. I've got honeysuckle here. I've never done honeysuckle before. 
let's try it. Just do it, that's what we have to say, just do it. Let's try the honeysuckle. Probably won't end up looking like a honeysuckle, but who knows? That's part of the fun. Right, here we go. So I'm going to fold that over that way this time. Flatten it down. Start hammering. Here we go again. Oh. Oh, that's the rose in the middle. Oh, look at that. Well, the roses are definitely working. Right, here we go. That purple rose is really good. I have to do that separately, I think, the next time. Here's the ferns. Oh, that's the honeysuckle. See, it's making a splodge, really. So the honeysuckle is maybe not the one we want to print. Ferns are good. I think that's mainly done. I think I'm really excited about the purple rolls. Anyway, I'm going to undo this. Oh, I had another, I had another honeysuckle there. It is just a splodge, but it's a different colour, so that's okay. Plus, they can all be enhanced with a bit of stitchery. Take it back. Oh my goodness, I think this is quite nice. So we'll take all the the squished plant off. That's definitely, a, I'm going to do that rose again. I'm going to give it its own starring role. Let's have a look so we can get it all off. So definitely the fronts of the flowers make the best print. But whether that's to do with that's the nearest bit to your hammer or whether that's to do with the way a flower is and where the sap or the colour is because the colour's going to be on the surface of the petal because that's what's attracting insects so I don't know which way that was I'd have to I'd have to do some research so I do quite like that but I think the lovely salmon of the other rose is, is turning gradually more and more um, honeysuckles it's not too bad actually. If you did embroidery on that, you'd definitely be able to see it was honeysuckle. I'm going to put my bit of silk down. I'm going to try the geranium first because I know that will make a good print. I'm just going to put it over and see what happens. I'll just see. I can always use this in something. So it doesn't matter that it's just a little piece. Oh wow! Wow, that looks good from that side already. Oh, it's really pretty. Actually, I think again, and you see where it's gone a bit like that in the middle? That's because there's too much sap there, so probably it's best to take the petals off and arrange them separately. But it's still a lovely print. Oh, it's still a bit of petal on, look. And these should all be colour fast now. That's lovely. That's got a bit of a soggy middle. But once it's dried and then stitched over, that'll be gorgeous. So we're going to try three. We're going to try the original one, the pink one, and a really pale one. Let's just see what colours they come out like. Back to hammering. That's 
actually. So far, so flipping lovely. Okay, this has been interesting. So when we open it up, oh, it's even stained the wood. It's gone right the way through. So what we've got is the pale pink one, virtually disintegrated. It did look pink, but I've got a feeling that's just going to dry to a muddy, creamy colour. The really pink geranium has made a very dark purple. Turned purple straight away as soon as it got hit. The Sweet Sicily's printed really well. And the blue geranium has stayed sort of a paler colour. But I think what I'm noticing is it's not staying such a clear outline on this one. So the outline is bleeding into the fabric. More definitely. The leaf isn't, but the flowers are. They're sort of bleeding through. Having said that, I can definitely use that. I really like this bit here where the purple's gone onto the green. Um, that is all usable printed fabric now. I can cut that up, I can stitch it onto a book, I can over embroider it. All sorts. So that's the polyester silk. It's the real silk. This is the original cotton sheet which actually I like a lot and I've got really good prints on here. So that's really nice. Look at that one, that's a beauty. This thick fabric. That definitely, the least successful but I'm sure I'll find a use for it. So there you have it. Just experiment and see what comes out. That's my favourite. That's beautiful. You can definitely see that's a pansy. Just needs some stitching and some beautiful stitches in the middle and that'll look absolutely amazing. I'm going to make some scones or some rock buns or something like that. Um, because I'm intending to stay up to sunset because it's the solstice and I just think I'd quite like to have a scone or a rock bun in my cup of tea when I'm sitting outside later on tonight. So I'm making sort of a rock bun thing. I've got uh, 250 grams of flour in my bowl uh, with some a teaspoon of sweet cinnamon, cinnamon and about a half a teaspoon of nutmeg and 75 grams of caster sugar. Now it my recipe would say rub in the butter, but I never rub in the butter, I grate it. So I'm going to just alter the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So if it says rub in butter, really usually things need to be kept cool. And I found that the easiest way is to take your butter straight out of the fridge and then just grate it in. And just keep dipping the butter in the flour so it doesn't... Um, melt all over your grater. But as long as you keep dipping it into the flour, the flour goes through the grater too. And what you get are lots and lots of little bits. And they you just keep I just keep picking them up and putting them through the grater. And you've got rubbed in butter a hell of a lot quicker and it's cold still. Whereas in this weather the heat of your hands melts it and scones and rock buns they need cold butter and the minimal handling so that they end up being light so i just grate the rest of this and you can see i'm dipping i keep turning the flour over the grated butter to keep it all separate there we go just about done right the butter's all in now Okay, but what I'll do is I'll just push it round so it's all separate and then I just put handfuls through the grater and it gets it even finer. But it's so quick. And if you use room temperature butter, it will rub in very quickly, but it's just going to go oily and you won't get as light a scone. I think that's done perfectly actually. 
and the smell of the cinnamon and nutmeg is beautiful. So, leave my grater there. Uh, so now I'm going to mix in my fruit. So I've got 125 grams of mixed up fruit. So I just mixed it up myself. I've got some um, raisins and currants and dried cranberries. And then I've chopped up some orange peel to go in with it. I'll put that in. I need one egg. Just put that straight in. And then really 150 grams of milk. But I did have some double cream left over from last week and there was a little bit. So I've put that in and I've topped it up with milk so that they're going to be quite rich and lovely. So all of that's going to go in. And then a teaspoon of lemon juice. And I don't actually have a lemon, but I'm just going to use the out of the bottle lemon. That'll actually start and turn the cream into more of a buttermilk. And which will also keep them light. So I'm just going to use a butter knife to stir it together. They're really quick buttons. Don't know whether people do them much anymore, but it was always a favourite when my brother and sister and I were children. We always loved Mum's rock buns. Sometimes I put coconut in them and cherries. I'm going to put cherries on top of these ones. So you can see I've got a sticky mixture. So it is not quite kneadable, but not droppable either. I mean, that's literally five minutes. I'm always saying five minutes because I'm. I, I want to. I want to have time for doing things like stitching. And maybe I don't want to be stuck at the cooker, but I, I really like baking. Anyway, you can see I've got a really sticky mixture. So that's not rollable out or anything. So I'm just going to uh, get my baking tray. Okay, baking tray's here. It's a non-stick. I'm not really going to need to do so. I could put a tiny bit of flour on, I suppose. I'll put a bit of flour. And then I'm going to get my spoon. And I'm just going to get a big dollops out of the... I'll turn you a bit more. There we go. I'm going to get, just get big dollops. And I'm going to put them on my tray. And I'm just going to leave them quite rough. That's what a rock bun is, isn't it? It might spread and all end up in one great big thing, I'm not sure. It's a while since I've made rock buns. I did intend to make scones. Changing my mind at the last minute. I'm going to put six on there, but I'm going to get... No, I'm going to put five on there. I'm going to get a lot more than five, though. Okay, they look good. I'm going to... Put, oh, any of you like raw mixture? I do. I'm going to put a cherry on top of each. I'm just going to cut them in half with some scissors. So I'll cut a cherry up and put a cherry in the top. Yeah, I might go and always have wanted a cherry on the top. In fact, you wouldn't want me to cut them in half, you'd want them whole. I'm more thrifty. There, mm. that one's gone in my mouth though. That's the first one. I'll get another tray. See if I, can, I think I can get another three or four out of here. Depends how big I'm making. Maybe I'm making them man sized. Pinch a bit off that one for that one. Mm. Don't waste any. Well, I can go on that one, I think, needs some. Okay. Cherry. Oh, I 
to eat them now. Okay, all done. I'm going to put them in the oven now. They're on, going to go in at about 200 and hopefully, that's 200 degrees C and hopefully for about 20 minutes. I'm going in now. While the rock buns are in the oven, I'm going to come out and do some stitching. I'm under the umbrella. It's still a bit windy, so I've had to wake my things down, but I'd rather be outside doing some sewing than in the house. And at the minute, I'm trying to get this finished. I'm doing a bird. Um, I'm onto the, onto the back of it, really, or the back end of it, so I want to put the tail on. And I've got this bit of frill off of the Victorian skirt. And so I feel as if, if I fold it up a bit and put it on there, it'll make a good tail. But I've also got some um, tarnalone. I have to think what it was there. I've got some silk cuff off an old blouse. I think that was a charity shop blouse. Uh, I've got the tops of an old skirt. Uh, which is there, which has got lots of nice blacks on, um, black and grey, but it's got this nice bit of lace, which is really nice, and, I'm, and I've put that on the bed already. And I've also got this lovely blue, which was one of my husband's shirts, and that'll make nice because we want, we want a bit of variation in the colour. And what I've also got here is a whole bag of vintage beads, black beads, so there's an old collar which I've already been cutting to make things and there are pieces of beadwork which are all falling apart but then I, I'm using them to apply and then I just stitch the bits that fall off, I stitch them back on again. So I've got all my supplies, I've got my needle and thread, my big scissors, my cup of tea I'm about to try and craft a bird's tail. I'm going to angle you a bit so you can see it. So can I do that? Yes. So I've got my pinny on because I'm waiting for the, the rock buns to come out. So first things first, I've got a couple of pins. I'm not sure whether I need this full piece or not. It's quite big but if I fold it up like that it fans out quite nicely and I think if I put that there I can then cut this into feathers and then apply the other things on top to give colour. So I'm going to thread my needle first and then get on with it. I hope you've been having a lovely day wherever you are if it's nice weather. Um, it has been a really beautiful day here but the wind has just got up a bit. Um, but it's still nicer outside than inside. I'm just going to thread my needle. I'm going to use a knot because it's just a, a stuffed bird really and I'll be hiding everything under all this applied stuff. So I think I'm going to just fold that into some sort of a pleat and then stitch it together so that I can apply it as one piece. I feel as if that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to hold it together there and start to stitch. So I'm just going to overcast it at the minute. Uh, this will all be hidden under whatever goes on next. I've been enjoying doing this bird. It's taken me a bit of time to work out how to support the wings. And in the end, I've got a wire. In fact, you can see the wire sticking out here because I still haven't soldered in properly. So I've got wire going right the way through the shoulder, down into the bird. And I sort of made like a keel, like a bird's breastbone, but out of wire. And then got it right into the middle to try and support the weight of the wings. Because I want the bird to stand up. Um, 
it's so slightly looking at the moment like a harbinger of doom but I have I just have an, an idea for what I want him to look like and it's going to be quite fantasy I think um, that's my intention anyway so I've just I've just straight stitched them together I'm going to make sure it's fanned out I'm not going to bother what this looks like at the minute because I'll be cutting them into feathers just like I've cut them into feathers so that's okay so I just have to work out where on the bird to put it. I feel, I stand them up, I feel as if, there's no point putting it right on the end. I feel as if up here somewhere. Looks about a natural place. So I'm going to just stitch it on with some straight stitches. And as I put more feathers on top, all of these straight stitches will end up being covered up because ravens are quite shaggy birds uh, and so I've got, I think I've got quite a lot of feathers to put on top this is just the, oh, I think that's my oven I think that's actually the rock buns done I'm just seeing just, it was my rock buns and I've left them in a bit wrong they do look like they're nice but they may be a little bit browner than I would have hoped for but never mind, they're going to taste lovely, I'm sure. I'm just going to carry on stitching this tail on. I'm not being too bothered about the stitches because I know they're all going to end up underneath extra feathers. So I think I'm going to just spread that out a little and tack it down so that I can really get the idea of the bird it's getting harder to work on because obviously I could have just put the wings on last but then again I can't because I had to see that it would stand up and I had to get the weight and the balance and so I sort of had to do them when I did them I made them off the bird and embroidered them and beaded them but then yesterday I actually got them installed and they're all sewn on now. They, oh, I, can, I can smell the rock buns. I'm not going to have one till later. Alright, I'll just want another one anyway. I think that's doing actually doing alright. I don't think I want it to hump there like that. I think I want it to be the other way, but I can sort that out as I do other things. So I'm going to cut some feathers out now. I'm, just, I'm going to cut some feathers out of the I think I'll just arrange them at the minute, stitch it on, I can see that I'm going to have colours. I feel as if I want some nice long ones over the top of there and I do have this lovely um, stretch denim. It was a charity shop pair of children's denims but it's got a really nice, it's a paisley pattern on, not a paisley. There's a name for this pattern, I can't remember what it is, but it's just sort of glistens and I thought it would be lovely for birds' feathers. So I'm going to cut out some long feathers. Oh yes, that's about the right size. Put that one there. And then I'll cut that one. Oh yes, they're gonna look lovely. Hope you can see this. I'm in the shade because I can't I can't work in the sunshine. But it's maybe not very good for the video. Lovely feather shape. Oops. They're definitely going to work. I'll put them in the sunshine so you can see. It's definitely going to work really nicely. Actually, this is going to support them really well. I would have liked to have had some purple um, fabric, but I've only got pale purple and I'm not willing to go and buy any just for the sake of a bird's tail. So I'll have to do without. I cut some of this nice um, 
crochet lace that's on this skirt. They all already look like feathery bits. Oh, I can see that's going to work. It's definitely going to work. I'm not sure whether I'm showing you or not. I'll only know tonight when I try and put it where I put it. I think that's nice. I need to put them on. You can hear that blackbird singing away. Anyway, I'm just going to carry on stitching. I can smell the rock buns. They are drawing me in. I'll carry on doing this until it gets too cool to sit here, I suppose. Or maybe it's just going to be all right anyway. I don't want to put any more wire on, but we'll see when these get cut. I'm going to carry on layering it up, layering feathers right round his legs and then I need to work on his head end. I need the head to be like that rather than sticking out. He needs to be like that for the stance that he's on. It's quarter to eight, the sun's starting to go down, the light through the leaves is so beautiful. I'm about to go and have my my rock bun and a cup of tea and I'm going to have it at the shady bench sitting up here my shady bench I couldn't get here this morning so that's something that's been achieved got my cup of tea I've got my rock bun it did go out a bit brown I've already sneaked on and it's really nice so I'm going to sit here I don't want to eat any later than now and it's about eight o'clock I think um, and I'm surrounded by the plants here. It's like a total little secret area, even though it's only tiny. We're probably not talking more than about a 12 foot diameter. I'll take you and show you from my point of view in a minute. But it's like a little cocoon up here. And it makes me feel very peaceful being surrounded by the greenery. It also makes me think of my favourite poem, which is by an American poet called Wendell Berry, and it's called The Peace of Wild Things, and I'll try and put the link in the description so that you can go and read it, because it's very beautiful. And it's sort of... It's the, it's the way I feel now. So that's, that's really lovely, that poem's in my head now. I'm going to turn you around, I'm going to eat my scone, eat my rock bun. I didn't make scones in the end. I'm going to eat my rock bun. I'm going to open it so you can see how fluffy it is on the inside. Oh my goodness, look at that. Bet you want a bite. Here we go. There you go, you can have a bite. It's all cinnamony and nutmeggy and super scummy. Anyway, I'm going to try and stay up till sunset. I'll film it for you. Here we are. That's the path I'd cleared this morning. I couldn't have even been sitting here. And look at the sunshine coming down. And I'm under the trees, under the honeysuckle. And the birds are singing. Ferns. You can just see a tiny glimpse of the pond. It's very overgrown. I'm back round to the path and my little embroidery clamp that I've been using for my phone. What a beautiful day. I hope you've had a lovely day too. Almost sunset. Beautiful sky. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a bit of Marine's world. As I've gone around my day today, I'm going to say bye bye. Bye bye for now.
leave me a comment if you've liked it and subscribe to me if you want to see some more